Hi, this is David Otan from Costa de Fels. Grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus. This is the seventh and final one in the series of seven videos called Seven Steps or Seven Ideas to Connect People with God. That is, how to help people experience the love and power of God for themselves. If you haven't already done so, please download the worksheet that goes along with this video series from the link that you will find in the description below. And if you do already have it, were you able to draw the three-circle gospel presentation of our last video in the space provided for it? Speaking of which, have you used this presentation to share the gospel with your friends? What did you draw it on? How did it go? Did you find it helpful? I bet you did. All right, today we'll move on to the next idea, the traffic light signal. How do I know if this is the person I should continue investing my time and energy in, or if Jesus is guiding me on to someone else? After using the first six tools from this series, what should I do next? Let's look at what Jesus says here in Luke 10. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace be to this house. If a man of peace is there, your peace will rest on him. But if not, it will return to you. Stay in that house, eating and drinking what they give you, for the laborer is worthy of his wages. Do not keep moving from house to house. In a later video, we will talk more about the person of peace, or the man of peace, as Jesus calls him here. For now, I just want to highlight that there are two possibilities. The person I am talking to is a person of peace. Or they are not a person of peace. If they are a person of peace, I should continue on with this person. However, if they are not a person of peace, I need to go look for someone else. In other words, I need to stop and make an assessment. I have already announced them the good news about the arrival of the kingdom of God's love and grace. That was step two, if you remember. Then I prayed for the person. I proclaimed peace and shalom over them. That was step three. I shared my own personal testimony with them. Step five. I gave them a more complete gospel presentation using the three circles. Step six. Now it's time to ask Jesus if this is the person of peace that he has prepared for me right now or not. Now, obviously, God wants everyone to be saved. 1 Timothy 2, 3, and 4, the 1, 2, 3, 4, says, This is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Does God want to save the person in front of me? Absolutely. But maybe it's not his plan to save them through me, or at least not at this moment. I'm not the Savior. I'm only an assistant to the Savior, and I can only do what the Father is already doing. In John 5, 19, Jesus says, Truly, truly, I say to you, the Son can do nothing of himself unless it is something he sees the Father doing. For whatever the Father does, these things the Son also does in like manner. So if Jesus, who is both God and a perfect human being, limited himself to doing only what the Father was doing, how much more should we do the same? So we stop for a moment and ask ourselves, what is the traffic light signaling? I don't know about your country, but here in Spain, traffic lights have three colors, red, yellow, and green. If the person doesn't show any interest at all in finding out more about Jesus, we could say that the signal is red. In other words, they are not the person we are looking for today. We need to go find someone else. However, if the person does show interest in knowing more about Jesus, in receiving prayer, or hearing more about the gospel, but isn't yet ready to make the decision to give their life to Jesus, then we could say that the signal is yellow, or at amber if you're from the UK or orange in some places of South Africa, I've heard. Of course, there, they call the whole device a robot. But anyway, what do we do if the signal is yellow slash amber? Well, we would meet with them again to talk and pray some more. 
Or we could invite them to a discovery Bible study. Now, here in Spain, it's quite likely to sound strange to them if we say it just like that. But we could simply read a verse uh, to them off our phone, such as John 10.10, for example. The thief only comes to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they might have life and might have it abundantly. Then we ask them, do you find this interesting, what Jesus says here? Can you see how it might relate to your life? Would you like to be part of a small group that meets at our local cafe to read the Bible together and discover what it says to each one of us? In the next video, I'll explain the basic concept of the Discovery Bible Study and a really simple way of leading one. If you can read an ordinary newspaper and you can remember three simple questions, you've already got what it takes. So just watch the video and give it a try. Getting back now to the traffic light, or robot, there is also a third possibility. If the person is ready to make a decision to follow Jesus, we could then say that the signal is green. If you haven't already done so, guide them in a prayer of acknowledging the cross and surrendering their life to Jesus, as we explained in step four of this series. Then I asked them to read Mark 1.17, and Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. Here Jesus commands us to do two things. Follow him, that is, listen to him, receive his love and care, grow in healing and restoration, obey him. That is the first part. It's like the first side of the coin. The second thing that Jesus commands us to do is to be fishers of men. That means helping other people experience God's love in the same way that you have. Wouldn't you like your friends and family members to experience Jesus' peace too? Wouldn't you want them to feel the same joy that you felt when you prayed to give your life to Jesus? That's what it means to be a fisher of men. That's uh, the flip side of the coin. And if they accept the challenge to follow Jesus and become fishers of men, I just give the coin to them. Let's watch the final part of the video with Justice and Sandra and see how he does this exact thing with her. Hey Sandra, so as I was explaining to you in the three circles, part of what it means to follow Jesus is to help people in their brokenness. Mm -hmm. And there's some words that Jesus says in Mark chapter 1, verse 17. Can you read them? Yeah, sure. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. Okay, so this scripture is twofold, not unlike two sides of this coin. Mm -hmm. The first side is to follow Jesus, the decision you make today, to obey him, to receive his love and his care, mm -hmm. to receive his peace and restoration. Um, but there's a second side to what Jesus says, mm -hmm. like the other side of this coin, and that's to be a fisher of people. That means to go out into this world and to help people experience what you experienced today. And wouldn't you like your friends and family to experience um, the peace that you received today? Yeah, definitely. Wouldn't you like them to um, receive the love and joy that you felt as you prayed to Jesus? Yeah, sure. Awesome, so that's, that's what it means to be a fisher of men. So if you accept the challenge of following Jesus, and being a fisher of people, I should say, then I would like to give this coin to you, but it's not for spending. It's to serve as a reminder of the decision that you made today to follow him. Furthermore, it's for you to give to the first person that you helped to experience Jesus, who makes a decision, who accepts the challenge of making the decision to follow him, and who agrees to be a fisher of people. So I wanna ask you if you accept this challenge. Yeah. Awesome. Then I'd like to give you this coin. Okay. Are you ready to start giving away coins? And if the person accepts the coin, I then try to leave them with the four final challenges. Who are you going to tell about the decision you've made today? Which of your friends or family members? What are you going to tell them? In other words, you practice their 15-second testimony with them a little. If you need help or encouragement, give me a call.
If you haven't already given them your phone number, this is your chance. When could we meet again so that you can tell me how it all went? Now, we don't want to pressure them or get ahead of Jesus, of course, but at the same time, we don't want to miss out on anything Jesus is doing either. So just ask the question with a friendly smile and see how they respond. All right? So what do you propose to do in response to all this? What are you going to try? What is Jesus challenging you to do? Lord Jesus, thank you for including me in your great work of saving the world. Show me the next step that you have prepared for me now. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and give me the confidence and courage to follow you and be a fisher of men. Amen. We'll end here. Thanks for watching the video. If you found it helpful, please give it a like and share it or write something in the comment section. And like I said, the next video will be on the Discovery Bible Study. How can I help other people experience for themselves how the Bible truly is living and active and brings blessings to all those who obey it? What's more, you don't need any special training to lead a Discovery Bible Study. If you can read and count to three, you already have it all. Jesus will do the rest. Sound interesting? Well, subscribe to the channel and stay tuned. All right, let me just leave you with a closing prayer. Heavenly Father, may your peace and grace be upon the person watching this video. May they experience your presence and love right where they are. Holy Spirit, reveal more of the Father's love to them and fill them with your power to make disciples this week. Amen.